Okay, so we're almost there. We just have to add our hold edges and our light bar and lights on the top. First thing I'm going to do is create that light bar, which is basically, and if we have our reference that we're uh, looking at here, it's just an extruded cube and then uh, another plane or uh, polygon or group of polygons that are pulled down from there. So how we could do that, if I create a cube and move that up, I'm going to go into my top view. <clears throat> and let's turn on x-ray so we can see through this thing. Okay, so you can see the, the light bar is here and it goes into there. Start this around here first. Okay. And let's see where this is landing. Let's tuck that down in. Let's pull up our reference again. So it's coming out, turning inwards, and then going into the middle here. And I'll mirror that over. And then we have this extruding outwards as well. So you can see that that's just a edge loop that's been applied and another edge loop that's applied there. So that's pretty basic. Um, without looking at my reference, I'll show you how I do it here. I'll have this down. I'll grab the face. I'll pull this up. Maybe at about here. Pull that up again and move it inwards. Let's look at that reference again. Okay, so up, up, up. So that's one long one right here. That's the main one, and then one more extrusion. So I actually have all those. I just kind of screwed that up. So let me just move this up, up, like that. That's looking similar to it. Um, this, these two actually would be even. We'd pull these down. Let's move these. Uh, Kind of up a little bit more and over. Okay. We can adjust this too. Let's just pull that one up and these upwards a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> if I grab this one and hold down shift and drag that out, and I'm going to use my scale tool and I'll scale that to make them even up. So I just pull that back on the scale, hold down X and snap that to the grid. I'm going to delete that one because I don't need it. I'm going to move this down a little bit more. Actually, let's move both of them down to keep that uh, shape maintaining itself. It's looking pretty close to the reference. Alright. Now we need to get that uh, other face pulled out here. So if we grab this one, just hold on shift, drag that out and push that straight down and let's push this into the ground or that area right there so that's good now if I hit 3 on the keyboard you'll notice that it's definitely um, not using any hold edges here so we need to fix that and that's pretty easy to do with a model like this I'm gonna actually turn off my reference because it's getting way everywhere here um, with this one I'm just gonna uh, go into my modeling toolkit with a multi-cut holding down the shift and control click here double click and move that down we'll do that with this one here as well so multi-cut and we'll <clears throat> let me turn off my uh, snap to one let's see if that helps much better so we'll go around here to hold that and up here we need to do that right underneath where these two connect right here and right here so now if I hit three you'll notice that that's actually keeping a little bit more of a rounder shape it's not a hundred percent you can see that we're missing um, some of the the depth as it goes straight down and that can be fixed again by just uh, grabbing all these vertices 
And yeah, that's actually, look at that, it's a rectangle, it's not a square. So I need to push this down until it maintains sort of a square shape. That way when that actually is um, smooth, it maintains that round shape because it'll, it'll round that out. Okay, that's better. If I hit three, much better. Still a little bit off in some areas, I can tweak that. Um, <clears throat> I want a hold edge on this too, just to make that that stay in that shape. We can do this, and if we hit three, getting kind of that type of shape. Not bad. I'm also gonna make sure that it's a little bit higher. So let me make sure I'm in my. I think it was side because I screwed up that earlier. Uh, and let's go into our reference. Yeah, it needs to be just a bit higher. And let's just push this over a little bit. All right. Now, I need to make some lights. All those lights are is a sphere that I squished. And I also pushed in some of those edges to maintain a hold edge. So we can do that very quickly. I'll create a sphere and I'm gonna reduce my polygons because I don't need it to be that detailed. So let's just go like 10 by 10. Actually, 10, yeah, 10 by 10, that's good. Let's rotate it on uh, 90 so we have it more of like this type of a shape. And I'm gonna push it back to this. And <clears throat> let's go, for me it's back, it hopefully is the side for you and Let's turn on x-ray so we can see what we're doing. There we go. Scale that down and over. It's pretty close to that, that's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna double, actually I'm gonna just grab all my vertices in the front. So all this and push it in. Now if it's not 100% there yet, we can double click on this edge loop, push that in some more. Maybe just pull these out a little bit. We can also scale this down a little bit. If it doesn't match 100%, I have some more edge loops in the other one, I might have just started with a uh, smaller circle, so that's not a big deal. Scale that, and let's look at what we got. So let's turn off x-ray. That's good, but it's not gonna stay like that if we don't turn on a hold edge. So we want um, a hold edge here and here to keep that um, hard when we smooth it. <clears throat> We're gonna go into our modeling toolkit, hit bevel, reduce that fraction. And now if I hit three, that's gorgeous, okay. Now that I have that, I am going to make sure this uh, spaces itself out appropriately. Uh, I don't know if I did that when I made the, no I did not, because you can see that this gap right here, you can see a polygon's width between this line here and this edge here versus this. So to make sure that these um, duplicate um, spaced out evenly, we're gonna go into edit, duplicate special, and I want that to duplicate three times. And let's see, if I had duplicated this object and moved it over, I want it to be spaced out about that far apart from each other. And I'm looking at the number on the bottom of my left-hand side of the screen. That's saying about negative 0.263. So let's see what we could do with that. Um, we're going to change this to negative. And 6440 I had. So 2, 3. Let's apply that. And there they are. They're spaced out pretty nicely. If I combine these, the pivot point is in the middle now. And if I hold down the X key and drag that towards the middle, now I actually have this in the center of my scene. So that's that's good. Now, there's one wheel. Duplicate, move that over. I'm also missing my bottom part. So let's do that right now. So if I go side, you might be noticing a, a total difference in my voice from earlier in the video to now. Um, I recorded this earlier uh, in the morning and this is now the nighttime and I am now coming down with a cold. So just a constant reminder for all of you to make sure that you guys are 
taking your vitamins and, uh, you know, not sticking your fingers in your eyeballs or anything weird like that while you're working in the lab because you never know what the person that was using that computer before you was doing. And if they were picking their nose and wiping it on that keyboard and mice, then guess what? You're going to be sitting there not knowing that, and that's fun. All right, I'm just looking at my reference here, and this is just like a, a V shape. It's very easy to do. Inside of here, <clears throat> I'm going to scale that out like that. That's pretty good. And this is actually scaling out like that well as well. So if I grab all of these and just go into bevel and reduce my fraction, I've already got that shape pretty well laid out. Now I have a, a cut down the middle um, on that reference. I don't need it really. So I'm going to just leave that alone. And it's looking pretty good. Um, this just has to go up a bit higher so it doesn't disappear. There we go. That's good. Duplicate it. Bring it over. All right. I got to make some uh, axles. So those axles are just going to be some cylinders. And I don't really even need to have it at that resolution. So I'll change the attribute or attribute to 10. And I'm also going to rotate it on my X. So I have it something like this. Scale it way down. That's that's a giant axle. The nice part is that would never break on you, but holy cow. All right, so we're going to scale that down, scale it out, pull it up. I'm going to look at my reference, which side for me, it hopefully is not the side, but it's front. Just lining it up with the reference again. Line this up as well, because it looks like my... Scale is off a little bit. There we go. So we're almost there. There we go. Make this the center of that object. That's better. All right. Duplicate. Bring that over for now. I can align all this later, but I'm just quickly putting this together. Wheels are on. That's good. All right. All that's left. I gotta add myself some hold edges on this because if I don't have that, notice how gross this looks. It looks like a, a melted Hershey bars chocolate car or something like that. So not so cool. It also looks like uh, there's an old arcade game that had these type of shapes on it back in the 70s um, before my time, but it's uh, very creepy looking. So let's not do that. We're gonna add some, add some hold edges. And uh, where do we need that? Well, we need it on the bumper uh, we should probably put it along this edge here. I don't mind the curve downwards on this, but the windows definitely shouldn't be round. Um, and the bottom of the car and the bumper, the back of the um, cab, all that stuff needs to be fixed. So let's let's do that. Um, and that's just a matter of double click, hold down shift, double click, double click, double click, double click, and. If you're watching at home, you can sing along with me the double clicks. No, don't. It's terrible. Uh, let's just keep going. We got to keep double clicking across everything and making sure that we're making these hold edges. And that's going to prevent any of this from deforming into these round blobs that we see um, with geometry if we hit smooth. Okay, that's pretty good here. I'm actually going to add it here just in case. Um, that's good. Uh, double click, double click, double click, double click, double click. Make sure when you're doing this, you're also getting those corners. Uh, that's going to cause issues if you don't do that. If I can't see it, I'm going to go to x ray mode and just select it from in there. Because that roll cage was in my way, or not the roll cage, but the light bar. We'll make sure that these are whoop, also gonna come with us. And some of you have been seeing, and I, I have this happen myself. Um, it may not allow for you to bevel. And what that's telling me, um, and what Maya is basically telling you when it can't do that, is that somewhere you have either like a five side 
or you have um, a vertice that's just floating off and doesn't have an edge connected to it. So it can't actually comprehend how to properly um, allow for a bevel to occur. So not good. Um, that's when it's you gotta do an inspection on your mesh, look to see if any of those glitches are going on. All right, let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna just go for it. Famous last words. Now I'll, I'll hit bevel. This is working. And now if I hit three, it's not bad. I really hate the front of this car. So I'm gonna go back, go back to one and hold down shift and harden that up too. Cause that, that just definitely would have been bad. So bevel. And then let's see what happens when we hit three. That's better. Now there's some bad things happening here. And what that is, is this stuff. When we have bevels that are near other bevels, uh, we're going to get stuff like this geometry, which is just a bad, bad uh, method. So this can be easily cleaned up. Um, we just got to give that a home. And so that's just multi-cutting. And if we were to hit three again, you've noticed that's already fixed itself pretty well. So just to be aware that that is why that happens. I know when you had this created, uh, it made some end gons. So you know what? That means you got to clean them up if you can. Um, when you hit smooth, that'll make those go away, obviously, but it is a good practice to make sure um, you're working as clean as possible. So um, look for any five siders or more and try and clean those up. This is a great example right here where I have one, two, three, four, five on top. Actually, even more than that because this edge has an edge loop there. Um, but if I were to hit smooth or hit three, pretty good except for there we have a tear so that's another spot that we can clean up and so I'm actually gonna do a multi cut where I'm gonna click this click that click this one and then that one and then now let's see what happens if we hit three all right that fixed that a little bit you still have a bit of a bump there and we can fix that with selecting both of these hit delete you'll notice I didn't actually hit um, edit delete edge vertex I just hit delete because I know if you keep it just by hitting delete on that and you're adding another piece to fix it it's not going to cause that problem where you'll have like a glitch um, with the geometry so that's good um, where it's indenting right here I can just go in and grab those vertices and edges and pull that out a little bit more so it's it's defining that again and that's good um, this has that same similar issue so I can go in here multi cut and cut cut I actually have a four there so uh, if I go into my mesh smooth that's not bad maybe I can get away with pulling this out a little bit more. I'll go into two mode. Again, number two, I have a hard time seeing what is doing what. So I, I like to go either one or three to see what that final end result is. Looking at this going up and down, I notice this is getting very thin near the top from the front perspective. So this is just something where we can grab these faces make sure you're not going through your mesh so deselect anything on the other side and drag that over and now if I hit three much nicer same thing with the top let's make this top a little bit higher so double click across here and across here and across here I'm going to deselect that deselect that and let's see why are you still low? So anytime you see a selection like this, that means there's something else selected, and what that was was something around here. So there we go. 
So never act on anything if you see your your um, your gizmo lower than it should be. Also, don't feed Gizmo after midnight because he will stop being your friend. Okay, we've got this thing, and I'm going to hit three again. Ooh, pretty. Got a weird thing going on back here. Again, keep evaluating your mat. Oh, you're missing a hold. That's why. Well, I can add a bevel, but I'm, I know better. I can actually fix that pretty quickly by um, just adding a... Uh, a cut right there so I'm gonna use multi cut and just cut cut and cut and let's see what that does so three fancy look at that all right now you'll notice on the back it's doing this round thing on the front it's nice and uh, straight that's because the back has a stowaway this face has to go away, and that has to go, and so does this one. Okay, now, we're almost there. We just have to put on um, a couple little things. So, let's see if we can make, now the reference doesn't have this, but let's see if we could do this right here. Um, let's add some lights and by now you should be a pro at this right so we're gonna grab this face and I'm gonna scale that down and I'm scale that <clears throat> and I'm gonna see if I can grab these edge loops Double click, double click, double click, double click, bevel. Gave a bit of a weird shader there. Let's see what that did. Okay. So Maya doesn't really like what I just did. Um, we can also, let's say, I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to scale that. And I'm going to see if I just... Um, scale that one more time. And I want to see if, if I just bevel this, what that will do to my geometry. So bevel, and three, whoa. Okay, Maya doesn't like that one either. So um, play around with this and see if you can come up with a solution for headlights that you like. That's gonna be a challenge for you guys. I know of a solution, I'm just showing you things that aren't really gonna go. Um, and then add a license plate on the front and back. So once we're all done with this, we're going to take it all, mirror it over, make sure that we're mirroring it on the proper axis. This is Z for me. And cut geometry, it shouldn't be a problem because it's going to merge all those things together for me. I'm going to do that same thing with this one. And it's going to be Z. And it should be position of object, but let's just double check what happened here. Um, okay, object isn't going to work. I should do it so it is my pivot point. Hit D on your keyboard and snap that by hitting uh, either holding down V or X to snap to your um, grid. And then now mirror on the Z. Turn off cut geometry. Much better. And let's just double check that these merged. They did. Okay, let's combine everything that's not moving and with these we can just do another merge or sorry uh, mirror and we're gonna tell this to mirror on 
the X or the Z and for whatever reason that one went off over there likely because of my pivot so what we could do is just grab both of these combine them first so mesh combine mirror that over and Z Whoop. cut geometry off there they are and then we can do a separate and now we have truck body and the wheels so this would be wheel uh, L front um, wheel L rear and you'll notice how I'm writing these down wheel R F and wheel R R so however you can make this make sense keep it making sense don't change your conventions also make sure when you have things selected that you're deleting your history that way you're not messing anything up and this is what I want I want it to be inside of a layer named truck I do not want you to actually apply a smooth to it I want to be able to just press the three on the keyboard and look at it okay and that's it